and take it away. Okay. Hi, I'm Dorothy Zemak, and I'm very pleased to be giving my second EFL talk. This year at IATEFL, I'm going to be giving one of the plenary addresses. So that was one thing that helped me choose this topic for my talk. The other thing that, that inspired this talk was a presentation given at IATEFL a few years ago called Where Are the Women in ELT? And it was kind of a surprising title because, of course, women are all over ELT. Most teachers are female. Most audience members are female. But one of the issues that the presenters addressed is why aren't more women visible giving plenary or keynote addresses? So this talk is for not, not for ways to invite women to your conference, but ways, if you are a woman, to get invited to give a plenary or a keynote address. So my first piece of advice would be to pick an area of specialization, something or you know, one or two things that you want to be known for. I think often as teachers, we wind up doing a lot of different things. And it's tempting when someone asks, what are your areas of specialization to say, well, everything. I do reading and writing and pronunciation and young learners and university students. And while that might be true in your day-to-day -day teaching life, if you want to be invited to do a talk, I would recommend picking one or two things that you can become known for. Because when conference organizers invite, look for people to invite, they're thinking, how do topics fit together? and who does what. So they're, they're more likely to say, oh, Yoko, she's an expert in pronunciation, instead of, oh, Yoko, she does, she does everything. Let's see if she happens to have a topic that will fit. So pick one or two things that you want to become known for that you would like to maybe someday give a, a keynote talk about and start working on that. And when I say working on that, I mean start getting known for that area so that you go from invisible to more visible. So if you've picked, for example, pronunciation, join groups on Facebook about pronunciation, ask questions, make posts, share links, uh, join certainly the, the local and national organizations in your country, but also perhaps the, some of the international ones like IATEFL or TESOL and join the relevant interest section so you meet other people interested in your topic and you just start getting your name out there. You can then move on to writing articles for newsletters, um, online journals, more important journals. Again, specializing on those areas that you want to become known for. And I will say that a very open and accessible and fun way to place to give talks is this one, is EFL Talks. You can talk to the organizer and say, hey, Rob, I'd like to give an EFL talk on and give him a couple areas from, from your newly picked area that you would like to become visible in. So you want to get your name out there. You want to get your ideas out there and you want your name connected with your areas of specialty. Then you want to start thinking about plenary topics in this area. And I, I think this is something that people struggle with sometimes because there, there, their ideas for talks for, for a regular conference talk aren't, they don't translate well into a talk for a plenary or a keynote. Remember that in a plenary or a keynote, the whole audience of the entire conference could potentially show up. You could have people who, who teach at private language schools, at universities, in businesses, who do young learners, who do high school students, who do uh, ESL, who do EFL. So your talk needs to be broad enough that it will be interesting to a lot of people. I have some examples on the screen of things that are too specific and, and in one case, that very last one on the left column, too broad, learning a foreign language. But no, normally the problems that I see people have with, with proposed plenary topics is that they are too specific. And all of those would be fantastic presentations for a smaller audience. But reading strategies for primary school students, what if half your audience doesn't teach primary school students? You've lost them before you began. On the right, I have some examples of, of um, 
plenaries that have been given recently by women. The most specific of those is probably Antonia's moving off the intermediate plateau. And yet when you think about it, almost all teachers have at some point in their life dealt with intermediate students or, or currently deal with intermediate students. Uh, Silvana Richardson's On Being a Non-Native Speaker influences you whether you are or not a non-native speaker, at least the way she, she pitched the, um, the topic. A learner resilience would, would be applicable to every learner out there. And social media for ELT professionals, which is one of mine, again, it doesn't matter what, what you're teaching. As an EFL professional, social media should be useful to you. The next thing you want to do is pick the conferences that you would like to attend, that, that you want to give a, a, a talk. Make sure that you understand what the audience is like, what the people are like, what kinds of talks are chosen, so you, you get a feel for what that conference is looking for. Next thing you want to do is actually present at the conference yourself. I don't mean, I mean you, you, you don't do a plenary until you're invited, but you should do smaller workshops, poster presentations, anything you can to get some experience with that conference. And again, get your name out there so people know who you are and what you sound like. And then it's up to you to start contacting conference organizers. I think this is a something a lot of people don't understand about how conferences either do work or at least can work. People sit at home waiting for a conference to contact them and say, hey, do you want to be our plenary speaker? And while that can happen, especially if you're exceptionally well known, uh, I've gotten a number of my plenary slots by directly approaching the people who organize the conference and proposing myself. The very first plenary that I did was, was at TESOL, and I was not famous, nobody had heard of me, nobody knew me. But I had a good idea, and I had a famous co-presenter, whom I also didn't know, but I approached him with my, with my idea. And then I went right up to the table of people organizing the conference for the next year and said, hey, how would you like this topic presented by these people next year? And they said yes. But there's no way that they would have considered either that topic or me if I had not approached them directly. So if you want an invitation, you're, you're allowed, <laughs> warmly encouraged, I would say, to go out and get it yourself. Then I, I would say pra practice your talk. This is assuming that you've been invited. Remember that once you give any high visibility talk, like a keynote or a plenary, people will be looking at you and judging you. And from that, you will be getting future invitations. So you want to make sure that your timing is good. Remember that in keynotes and plenaries, a lot of time is used up uh, giving out awards and thanking organizers and whatnot. So if you're given 60 minutes, you might really only have 45 or 50. Um, and you want to practice your presentation until it's smooth and you're comfortable with it so that when you do get your moment in the limelight, especially if it's going to be recorded, you're confident that you sound well enough that you're actually advertising yourself for future talks as well. I would also not be shy about talking to women and, and men about how they got the invitations that they did get. Some, of, some people you can see are clearly sponsored by publishers, in which case you know how they got there. But look for the people who are not sponsored by publishers and ask, gosh, how did this committee hear about you? How did this conference hear about you? Had you been to this conference? How many times had you been to this conference before you, you worked up to this more visible slot? So that you have some idea about how they did it. I'm giving you an address here. It's actually not about um, giving a plenary. It's about uh, how she got a scholarship to attend Aya Tefl, but it's a very similar journey to what I've, I've um, outlined here. And I, I think it's worth checking out Elena's story to see how she did it. And finally, I would say don't give up. Be, be persistent. I, I approached Aya Tefl, I want to say for four or five years before we finally had a time when the topic I wanted to give corresponded with 
who they wanted to have at the conference and the kind of topics that they wanted to fill out their slate. So I, I proposed myself several years to IATEFL and they said, oh, thank you very much, but we don't need this topic at this time. But because I really wanted to talk at that conference, because I love IATEFL, I kept going for it. And in the end, I wound up um, having an offer. But thank you very much for listening. And I hope that someday I will be seeing you up on the stage giving a keynote or a plenary. Dorothy, that was great. If you let's try your camera.